Hey there, I'm Joel Jamieson of 8weeksout.com and author of Ultimate MMA Conditioning. And in this video and the next three after it, we're going to be talking about energy systems. And really what I want to do is just cover the basics, dispel some myths, and give you a little bit more information and better ideas of how energy systems apply to your training and how you can get more out of your training with an understanding of energy systems. So to get things started, let's talk about some common energy system myths. And really, this is why I wanted to make these videos, to dispel a lot of these myths because there's simply far too many of them out there, especially when it comes to energy systems. So first, a common myth is that interval training is really all that's needed. And that's become pervasive across fitness, health, performance for many years. And we'll talk about why that's not the case. Another one, lactic acid causes fatigue. And of course, research over 20 years ago has proven that lactic acid doesn't indeed cause fatigue and may not even exist in the human body. Um, another one, if a sport's explosive or anything is explosive, it must be purely anaerobic. Uh, if you train slow, you'll be slow. And of course, one of the biggest myths of all, the harder you train, the better shape you're going to be in. And I think if that were the case, we'd see a lot more people in tremendous shape. And we can look at top athletes of any sport that train incredibly hard, and yet many of them have conditioning problems and could be in better shape. So conditioning and energy systems is really not just about how hard you train. There's an element of how intelligently you train and how you put your, together your program as well that ultimately is going to dictate results. Okay, so let's talk first about why are we talking about energy systems in general? What is so important about them? And really the most important thing to understand is that everything in your body ultimately comes down to energy. And what I mean by that is every cell in your body from the cells in your brain to the cells in your muscle to the cells in your heart and every other tissue in your body requires a constant and unending supply of energy in order to stay alive, in order to function, in order to keep your body going. So when we talk about energy systems, we're not just talking about performance, doing some sprints or some intervals or you know, performing on the field or the court or whatever. We're talking about the body's fundamental drive to stay alive, and that means energy production and lots of it 24-7, 365. It's not something that just happens when you train hard. It's something that's happening throughout your entire life until the very end, because if you, don't, if you do run out of energy, you quickly die. So the whole point of energy is systems and energy is not just to help you perform, it's to keep you alive. Another big thing to keep in mind is that conditioning, which we often associate with energy systems, it's directly related to two things, and mostly that's the energy production and the energy expenditure. But both of those things are related to the body's ability to maintain homeostasis. That's a key point to understand when it comes to energy systems. So what are we talking about when we, mean, when we say homeostasis? Well, homeostasis is the maintenance of the body's internal environment within whatever required physiologically norms are for different areas in the face of various internal and external stressors. So what do I mean by that? I mean that whatever you put your body, whatever sort of environment you put your body in, whether you're sprinting down the field, whether you're playing a sport, whether you're lifting weights, uh, whether you're doing some sort of running of any kind, whatever it is you're doing, you're putting your body in a specific environment. Now within the body, it has to keep things like temperature, your blood pH, your blood pressure, your hydration, blood sugar, all these different things and many more. It has to keep them within pretty narrow ranges. And the reason for that is because if it goes outside those ranges in a lot of areas, you cannot produce energy anymore and the cells are gonna die. So of course our body is designed to inherently protect us and keep those things in normal ranges. So it's designed essentially to lead to fatigue before homeostasis gets disrupted too much. That's very important to understand. It's a defense mechanism, it's a protective mechanism, it's meant to keep you alive. So fundamentally, the cause of fatigue, even though we don't understand all the specific mechanisms, the cause of fatigue, no matter what the circumstance is, ultimately comes down to the body's defense and protecting itself against homeostasis being challenged too much. So if things like I said, blood pH and temperature and blood pressure and all these things start going too far outside of where the body likes them to be, that's ultimately why your body is going to fatigue because fatigue makes you slow down. And when you slow down, you need less energy and your body is able to get things back to normal. So just keep in mind that we talk about homeostasis, we talk about energy production, we're talking about the body's drive to fundamentally live and survive. We're not talking about performance at the, as the primary thing. That's really secondary to the body. The body just wants to maintain homeostasis, it wants to do its job of keeping you alive, and then it considers the environment you're in and figures out the best way to accomplish that. And really when we talk about accomplishing that for performance and, and life in general, we're talking about two primary energy pathways. And you've probably heard of these. One is the aerobic, and of course that means with oxygen, and one is the anaerobic, and that means without oxygen. But both of these systems are used to produce the same molecule, we call the body's energy currency, 
ATP or adenosine triphosphate. And that's the molecule that your body uses to produce energy or it basically takes energy from the molecular bonds being broken. And that's what fuels muscular work and cellular function. And what I mean by that is that's the molecule, that same molecule fuels your muscles working and doing their job whenever you're doing any sort of movement. And it fuels your brain, your heart, your organs, and every other tissue in the body. The same molecule is the single currency that your body uses. And again, it can only be produced through aerobic or anaerobic pathways. And if we see this force fatigability curve, this tells us that there's different ways the body can produce energy. And what I mean by that is the body can produce it extremely rapidly, and we've considered that a very high rate of energy production. So it's a lot of ATP in a short period of time, and it has to produce it for some duration, right? And we can look at the more force we have to produce, the more power we have to produce, the higher rate we have to produce energy at, the faster our body is going to fatigue. There's no getting around that. So we can see that sports that rely on maximum rate of energy production, sports like weightlifting, you know, powerlifting, track and field jumps, you know, short sprints, those things require tremendously high rates of energy production. And of course, their duration is extremely short because you fatigue very quickly. You're not doing a heavy weightlifting movement or a maximum effort powerlifting movement for minutes or hours on end. Obviously, you're doing them for seconds because of the tremendously high rate of energy being produced. Now, if we look at the other end of the spectrum, maximum duration, this is where we challenge the body to become incredibly economically efficient in how it produces energy so it's able to maintain it for long periods of time. And this is where things like marathon running, triathlon, cycling, and you know, all the endurance type sports come in. The rate of energy production is really not as important in that regard. What's really important is the economy and the efficiency and how well the body can maintain that environment over long periods of time as you challenge it to produce energy in long uh, periods of time. And we're going to talk more about this in the coming videos, but this fundamental understanding of the force fatigability relationship is fundamental to understanding how energy systems and how our work and how they relate to performance. All right, so just to sum up this first video, the biggest thing to understand is that energy systems are not just about performance, they are about survival. And your body is always going to consider survival before what we would consider as performance. Okay, the next thing is that we talked about is both aerobic and anaerobic pathways are used to produce energy depending on how much energy is needed. And the next video, we're going to be a little bit more specific about how the rate and the duration are going to relate to the aerobic versus the anaerobic side. Okay, and the next thing, the final thing to wrap things up with is that there's always a trade-off. There's always a trade-off between how fast you can produce energy and how long you can maintain that energy for. That is an absolute that you cannot break. That's just how the body's designed. And again, it's designed because the faster you produce energy, the more stressful it is in the body, the more likely you are to run it down quickly. And so the body is very, very well designed to prevent you from ever running to the point where you would kill yourself. You literally, uh, you know, it's very difficult to run yourself into the ground. Literally, the body has a lot of safeguards to prevent that from happening. So understanding that can help us be more efficient and design our programs with a better understanding of what the body's actually trying to do. All right, so that wraps this video up and coming up in the next one, we're gonna talk a little bit more about how the aerobic and the anaerobic systems interact and introduce a great concept called the anaerobic power reserve that you fundamentally need to know before you program for energy system training. So thanks for listening, we'll see you again soon.